Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with another painting tutorial. So obviously it's Friday, the literal best of all days. Hitting you up with part two of painting Necron Tomb Raids. This has been a fun project for me because I got paid to paint one of my favorite color schemes. I love the grays, I love the neutrals, but I love the exciting electric pops. Like I love the green, I love the purples, the pinks, any color I get my hand on that I can pop them out makes me happy. When you're in the Beats Laboratory all day in the grim dark future of the 41st millennium, sometimes you just want to paint some exciting colors. You know, uh, in the midst of like some Iron Hands commissions I'm working on and you know, all these other manner of, of grim dark, this has been fun. So today we're going to explore the wrap up, the final highlights, using them paintbrush skills along with your, uh, your old airbrush. I do want to talk about a couple things though before we go on. ATC has arrived. We're going to be the ATC all weekend playing, helping, volunteering, doing our best. Hopefully we see you guys there and hopefully I saw you there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm bringing out some uh, some notorious stuff. Uh, I'll let you guys ask me about it in the comments below before I break anything. TheLongWord.net. So the long word will be at the ATC. We will be in Tennessee. TheLongWord.net is your portal for early and exclusive access to all your favorite stuff best painting tutorials, the best battle reports, and the best assembly guides, and the best rumors, uh, the newest, freshest tactics, and the Beats Laboratory download section with all the newest army lists. Fresh, growing every day. Become a veteran today. Seek your weapon miniature. Have you heard of them? They're amazing. They got the sickest bases and game add-ons. They are giving us 10% off. Dicehead Games, another OG, the official sponsor of ATC. They're offering 6% additional value off of their already low 20% off of most things. When you get a chance, you need to jump over there to the longword.net. Become a member, activate your account, get access to these redemption codes. That simple. It doesn't take a scientist. If it costs $5.99 a month to be a member of the Long War, and you are gonna spend some amount of money this week or this month on bases or product, Yo, doesn't take a scientist, right? I'm not a scientist, so obviously. Next, I wanna talk about Patreon. I don't talk about Patreon all the time anymore, but it still exists. It's my personal crowdfunding page. You know, obviously we all behind the scenes do the battle reports in the long war. Next level paintings will be part of the long war, but I need a little bit of time to get my resources together and that's what Patreon gives me. It gives me some of that financial support. Just a couple extra bucks here and there, uh, really help me hold it down and eventually I can segue into painting anything on request. Right now I'm dedicated to painting my commissions, but if I can get a little bit more scratch, right, I can paint anything, the newest, freshest models. I've said this before, I don't do this to get paid, but I have to get paid to do this. Anyway, let's check out today's tutorial. Let's do this thing. Part two, Necron Tomb Blades. This is obviously the staple of any Necron to Kyrian detachment. Six Tomb Blades, and they're actually pretty good. So we're gonna jump into all the other parts I left off. The sort of bicycle frame that a Tomb Blade is. Those fans, those extra blades, all the little weird stuff. We're gonna jump right into the same process. Quick refresher. Iosin Green, base coat. Necrotite Green, highlight. These are both P3 Formula Privateer Press paints. I love these colors. Now we're gonna grab this big, you know, racing fairy or whatever this is, and we're gonna hit it with just Vallejo Gray. Part of the Joker color scheme that we've been doing is grays and whites where there might be metals. There's no metal metallic paints used on these Necrons I've been painting. And you can see them all here. Um, these parts that we left off, and you can see why we left them off. We're gonna come through with a little white mixed in with a little bit of that gray, and we're gonna start highlighting some of these interesting angles on these fairings with the airbrush. That's why we have it. You know, we're hitting those little blades that are sticking off the side, hitting some of that uh, top curvature from the top down. Literally, just go with your heart. Like, it's not, a, it's not a competition to make the most realistic looking model. For me, it's a competition to make the most fantastic looking model. I like interesting angles, amazing colors. I like it to be vibrant. I like it to just look fantastic. You know, like totally being the fantasy of the game. 
So you see, we left all the parts off, so that way we can get to these interesting angles. Uh, there would have been no way to paint this while the thing was together. And now we're gonna pick out some more pure white and just kind of give it that final little transition on these edges and just really just like knocks it out of the park with that gradation. That is what the airbrush is all about. Obviously, use double stick tape, use gloves, whatever you need to use to, to mount these, uh, these, these parts separately. And you can see here, um, glued them all back together. That was, you know, put the rider in there, everything. And now we're painting some of the details over the, the fairy. And one of them is this latch that holds the blade together. I'm gonna paint that with the same violet, the same purple that we started painting the other things on the vehicle with. Really simple, it's um, like a royal purple from Vallejo. And we're gonna go right into it and wet blend it with pink from Vallejo. Give it a nice transition by hand. Uh, don't overthink it because you can always go in and edge highlight it just one more time. So these techniques don't even have to be utilized. It's like I said, you put into it what you get out of it. You know, whatever the proverb is, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't just airbrush things. I go in there and I use the paintbrush too. So the same thing with these little runes or whatever these like Necron ones and zeros from the Matrix are on the side of the vehicle. We're gonna hit those with the uh, darker purple first, and then we're gonna hit the raised edges a little bit with the pink, give it some nice highlights, and you can see the edge highlight comes through. It's really nice. Like you don't. You could have just left it solid purple and it would have looked fine to most people. You can use these techniques in any way you want. I'm showing you how to take it to tabletop and then how to go a little bit beyond tabletop. Same thing, we're gonna go dark side highlight, which is where you take the darker side of the thing you wanna highlight and you hide that like that with like a pure white. And that gives you kind of a semi hallucination of, or you know, it, it makes it look like it, it's metallic. Whenever you highlight the darker side with pure white, it gives it that look of like a razor's edge, uh, you know, something that is maybe possibly reflective and catching the light. And we're gonna come through and just kind of quickly highlight the framework of this section of the fairing. And you can see how much it already starts making a pop. And you can go through and you can do this on as much of the vehicle as you want. Literally, it's up to you. You can stop with tabletop, you can go beyond tabletop, you can just, you can put, you know, 100 extra hours if you want. Now, these are like the kind of the control panels that kind of hold that whole top section together. Left these off, didn't know what to paint them, so I just went back to our traditional violet, our Vallejo um, royal purple color that we have. We just hit them with that, then we're mixing like a little um, amethyst, which is another Vallejo, uh, I think it's actually a Reaper color, and I'm mixing the amethyst in uh, with the uh, purple in order to give it this natural transition. And that's one of those colors I'm talking about. If you can find a color that's not white to highlight them, you'll get a lot more out of the paint. And I'm using amethyst and pink to highlight these royal purples. I mean, as you can see, they are really clean and really smooth. And obviously I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna edge highlight these pieces. Like, you know, like that's, that's the name of the game. Give yourself some smooth transitions and then take your paintbrush out and give them some crisp lines. And as you can see, I mean, it's easy. When something's like when something is a straight edge like that, you just have to drag the paintbrush along the edge. You don't really have to paint the the line on. You just you're almost just dry brushing the line on. And these things are crisp, man. I mean, that is how you create an incredible transition and you know and make it look kind of reflective, kind of beyond real. You know that world of fantasy that we talk about. And there they are, looking super fresh. Very fun to paint. I mean, I just had a blast painting this color scheme. I love, can't tell you how much I love this color scheme. And obviously we're gonna take a look at the gallery pictures where you can see where I had the lighting right and everything. And thank you for checking this video. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon. Help me bring a hobby back. Anyway, thanks for watching players. Thanks for checking out that video. Don't forget, I've got tons of other tutorials in the archives, and I do this every week for free. If you're looking for an ad-free experience, check out the longward.net. All these videos come out a week early with exclusive access and exclusive downloads and ad-free. Also, check out my best friend Rob Bear at Spiky Bits, and of course the Long War YouTube channel for all the freshest battery parts. Thanks for watching.